Delilah said to her, do you know what, we just heard you do a massive poo. And the woman just died, just died on the spot. Baby number five taking us up to a family of seven, which I think is pretty much like Von Trapp level of children. Uh, but yeah, no, really excited. I think the kids are like over the moon about it. And I think, to be honest, I feel like once you've, you're outnumbered, uh, then it kind of, apart from the washing, it's, you don't notice it too much. The house is already chaos, so. The kids were over the moon when we told them uh, that there was a new addition coming. Delilah, she's 10 now. I think she's pretty, pretty certain that we've just done it for her. I think she thinks that this is like, like a project that she can sort of micromanage, but she's really, really excited. Um, Casper spends his entire time, so he's just turned four, he spends his entire time asking me what the baby's saying. What's the baby saying now? What's the baby saying now? What's it's just so I'm constantly making up like a stream of consciousness. Well, Casper is a carbon copy of Mark. There's, if I hadn't have given birth to him myself, I would question whether there was any of me in him whatsoever because they are two peas in a pod. Um, I don't know, I think his sort of tenacity and dedication and drive that Mark has is definitely a good thing, if not slightly testing sometimes when you're trying to parent that tenacity. Um, whereas I'm a lot more relaxed, I'm a lot more sort of chilled out. So if we could maybe have a bit of my sort of more chilled out approach, that would probably make it, make it easier for me. My favorite thing about being a parent kind of changes all the time. And I think it's been different with all the children. Um, and I think my favorite thing is kind of that no matter how many children you have, they're all so different and you have to do things so differently because what worked with one might not work with the other. Parenting fails wise, I've definitely, you've got like your standard stuff when you're like not sending in when it's like a non-uniform. To be honest, that's the only real good reason to have a group chat on school is so that you can remind me if I need to bring in like a pound and a costume of some description. One of my worst, most mortifying moments as a parent was we were at the London Velodrome, Mark was racing, I had Delilah with me, she must have been about three, and we'd gone into the bathroom, we'd gone to the toilet, there was a lady with the toilet cubicle closed next to us, and Delilah had gone in, you know, using the bathroom, whatever else, and the lady next to us had obviously also used the bathroom. And when we came out to wash our hands, Delilah said to her, do you know what, we just heard you do a massive poo. And the woman just died, just died on the spot, couldn't make a response. And you know, I'm trying to make it okay. I'm trying to be like, oh no, no, there's no making that okay. And you know, out of the mouths of babes, you can't predict what's gonna come out. I would say a couple of things that I couldn't live without as a parent would be baby wipes. And I think actually that was the one thing as then my, my youngest being out of nappies is not having baby wipes on me at all times. Any problem, lipstick, baby wipe, like, well, but anything. They can solve anything, a baby wipe. And also, I would go like an Elizabeth Arden eight hour cream. You can use that on anything. You, them, anything. So baby wipes, eight hour cream, and you're good to go. Just don't take people's advice. Everyone and their dog is gonna give you advice from the minute that you're pregnant to having the baby, and I think that obviously, especially being like a few children in now, is just you work out what works for you, what works for your unit, for your family, and sort of block everything else out because it doesn't really matter what works for like Susan next door's best friend's dad's dog. It has to work for you.